13 tons of human hair seized. And it didn't come from volunteers. What has the Chinese Communist Party been doing to the Uyghur people? Welcome back to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. The Chinese Communist Party has quite a history of brutality. And it seems the party has taken all those history lessons and applied them to the Uyghur ethnic minority in Xinjiang. It's bad. Recently, U.S. Customs captured a shipment of 13 tons of human hair products from China. And let's just say, the hair didn't come from voluntary donors. Joining me today is Nuri Turkel, a Uyghur American attorney and Uyghur rights advocate. Thanks for joining me. Thank you very much for having me. So first off, congratulations on recently being named a commissioner for the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's an honor to be in this position, particularly being appointed by Speaker Pelosi, who has been a champion for uh, human rights in China, and me uh, replacing a Tibetan American commissioner is another uh, significance in addition to the uh, this unique platform that I've been provided to promote religious freedom in China. Well, it's been great to see the U.S. government, which is often very divided, being very united on China and particularly uh, the Uyghur situation. But why don't you tell us a little bit about what the group does? The uh, USERF is the acronym for the United States uh, Commission on International Religious Freedom was established um, under the International Religious Freedom Act of 1998. The commission has nine uh, commissioners uh, and around 20 staff members. Uh, we are statutorily authorized to monitor religious freedom around the world, including to designate uh, a designation of uh, countries of particular concern uh, and making recommendations to the President of the United States, Secretary of State and Congress to ensure that uh, religious freedom is a uh, key part of the U.S. foreign policy agenda. Jose, so there's a, been a recent report from the Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation uh, that highlights the issue of forced abortions and sterilizations being used on Uyghur women. Can you talk about what's happening? The forced sterilization, uh, family planning has been part of the Uyghur life for as long as I can remember. Um, I grew up in a society where Uyghur women uh, to go through late-term abortion um, uh, because of China's um, family planning policies. Uh, and recently, the Chinese leadership uh, eased up the uh, family planning, uh, allowing uh, the citizens to have two children. At the same time, they've been using uh, the forced sterilization population control to to prevent the population growth in the Uyghur society. Uh, not only that the Uyghur woman uh, must comply, but also there will be uh, a retaliation against them uh, or consequences, if you will, if failure to comply with the uh, authorities' um, uh, directives. So um, to the Uyghur people as being a conservative uh, uh, human being, a uh, conservative society, Conceiving a child, uh, being able to bring a child to this world, as far as the number is concerned, the way that they, uh, they, they uh, conceive and give a birth, is a matter of personal choice, as a matter of privacy. It's something that uh, husband and wife or partners uh, decide. And yet the Chinese government not only uh, invading uh, Uyghur families' privacy, a right to choose, but also they're penalizing uh, the Uyghur woman who had desires to have more than what the government allowed them. And uh, in the last two, three years, uh, in addition to the forced sterilization, there have been uh, a credible report that uh, Uyghur women have been subject to various forms of abuses in the concentration camps, including uh, gang rape, as reported by um, uh, in a newspaper article uh, last summer. Uh, based on the personal account of this uh, uh, Kazakh refugee who used to be part of the, um, the concentration camp management system. So the Uyghur people have been subject to wholesale attack um, uh, on multiple fronts, religious, cultural. But now 
the Uyghur woman cannot even own their own body. Um, so uh, it is uh, it amounts to genocide. Uh, the genocide convention clearly states that if there's a systematic a governmental or institutional effort to prevent population growth that could constitute uh, or may qualify for genocide contextually. Well, it's, it's, it's been tragic seeing what's happening to the Uyghurs. I, I have to ask, as a Uyghur yourself, what was your feeling when you heard U.S. Customs seized a shipment from China containing 13 tons of hair products believed to have been harvested from Uyghurs? It is, um, it, it, it is extremely disturbing, even creepy, that a Uyghur woman's hair uh, have not been left alone. Even Uyghur woman's hair have been used by the authorities or the enterprises connected to the state uh, for commercial purposes. This should be one of the chilling uh, uh, reasons that the international community, the people around the world who appreciates human, human values, human rights, religious freedom, to speak out. The international community cannot continue to go business as usual. What we're dealing is a repressive, brutal regime that have zero tolerance on uh, political dissent. Uh, what we're being just other. Um, uh, as a commissioner, my job is not only focus on Uyghur religious freedom. I am also um, responsible for other uh, uh, persecuted religious minorities, including Christian Chinese, Falun Gong practitioners, Tibetan Buddhists, and others. So I urge the Chinese government to revisit their policies and reverse some of the repressive policies, or even just get onto the right side of the civilization. I know it's, it's a loaded word, but the Chinese government and Chinese gov uh, people and Chinese society cannot have their own rightful place as long as they continue to uh, repress their own population uh, for political expediency, for this self-created image, uh, enemy in uh, religious practitioners, including the Uyghurs, the Tibetan Buddhists, and the Falun Gong practitioners, and Chinese Christians. So uh, uh, Ambassador Sam Brownback said it best that China is in a war on faith that has to stop. Um, uh, religious practices, uh, and diversity, to be able to enjoy their privacy is actually good for the society. The Chinese government should not treat them as a threat to their existence and, and survival of the Communist Party. And of course, it's not just hair that China has been accused of harvesting from Uyghurs. Some people are talking about what's being called halal organ tourism. Have you seen any evidence of that? Um, Several credible reports being published. Um, at least two UK-based -based experts have been publicly speaking out about uh, this disturbing uh, news. Um, that, I think, has some uh, basis. The hospitals in Beijing uh, show that there are uh, designated hospitals actively promoted to Arabic-speaking uh, uh, individuals, patients who are looking for organ donors. The organ uh, harvesting started way back uh, with Falun Gong practitioners. The international community did not pay enough attention. We, this, this has continued to become a systematic problem. And now the Uyghur people paying price for it. So I encourage um, not only the American people, uh, the US government, but also the international community to call China out for these brutal practices. I mean, the, the human being, uh, human lives appear to have no value uh, when it comes to China's government's uh, uh, political interest. This has to stop. Recently, Congress passed and Trump signed the Uyghur Human Rights Policy Act. It basically allows the U.S. to sanction Chinese officials involved in the persecution of Uyghurs. Do you think that's enough or should the U.S. be doing more? Um, USERF uh, welcomes the recent development and President Trump's uh, signing of this uh, significant historic bill, but that's not enough. Even before this bill is signed, a United States government, um, a Congress given uh, tools to the administration to utilize um, those abusive government officials, uh, entities that facilitated human rights abuses in countries like China. Uh, to this day, since the enactment of the Global Magnitsky Act uh, in 2016, there's only one Chinese official that has been uh, sanctioned, uh, which is unacceptable. 
I urged President Trump uh, and his team at the Treasury, at the, uh, the State Department to not only utilize the existing laws, but also effectively implement uh, the Uyghur bill. That directs the president to sanction, uh, impose uh, visa restrictions on the Chinese officials who have been responsible for human rights abuses uh, committed against the Uyghurs and Christians and other uh, religious minorities in China. But this should not be the end of the story. This should be just the beginning of this long fight. Uh, there are at least two other uh, legislative initiatives uh, in the United States Congress. Uh, one is profoundly and significantly important uh, that addresses the forced labor issue. The modern day slavery is back uh, in the Uyghur societies. Uh, at least 83 brands uh, have been linked to the forced labor situation in the Uyghur region. So I, you know, including the hair product that uh, you asked earlier or discussed earlier, um, the American consumers, American investors have been uh, unwittingly supported this uh, state-sponsored uh, slavery. So this bill, um, the, uh, the recently enacted bill, as well as the one that has been considered, addresses the uh, uh, political issues, economic issues, national security issues, and of course, moral issues that is there and near to us, uh, those of us who live in free societies. Well, so what do you think it will take to actually get the Communist Party to stop persecuting religious groups in China? Two things have to happen. One is um, the international community need to uh, be vocal. Uh, Chinese government cares uh, significantly uh, how they're being portrayed in international uh, uh, communities around the world. They care so much about their face, so much about their public image. This is why they've been so uh, aggressive uh, to the extent to continue this uh, diplomatic effort uh, dubbed as a wolf diplomacy around the world. So calling them out is one of the effective ways to get their attention. And then two, uh, tackle them on economic fronts. What made the Communist Party as powerful as today is the fact that they have lots of money. So initially, when the international community in the 90s, uh, particularly the United States, brought China into the thinking that making them rich, make the country advance um, societally, uh, technologically, will make them naturally get onto the right side of the civilized world. That didn't happen. Uh, conversely, they're using that very uh, power, the economic power, diplomatic influence to create a false division around the world. As we speak, the world is divided thanks to Chinese effort, ch thanks to Chinese money. Recently, the Human Rights Council at the UN uh, uh, took a side with the Chinese authorities. Last summer, there was a, uh, a split between pro-camp and against camp. There were 22 countries plus uh, Japan uh, came out uh, critical of the Chinese uh, concentration camps. And there were uh, more than 50 countries came out in support of the Chinese uh, concentration camps or Chinese policies. The China's uh, Communist Party's effort to div divide the world has been effective, sadly. So the, uh, the corrupt, corrosive uh, methods that have been imp implemented, uh, applied by the Chinese authorities, have uh, got them what they want in their um, uh, wolf diplom diplomacy efforts. So call them out uh, and tackle them on an economic uh, front. Well, don't you think that's going to be hard if the Communist Party has divided the world like you say they have? The, because um, the, the world, the international community, falsely believe that criticizing China is somewhat helping or taking the same position as the, the current administration. Uh, that's exactly what and how the Chinese government wants the world to believe. Tackling China, tackling Communist Party, uh, uh, being critical of them, calling them out publicly is a moral issue. Uh, the, the status quo is not sustainable. Uh, so it is difficult. Uh, we, I don't, we don't advocate um, cutting off economic ties to the uh, Chinese state as a commission, as a country. Uh, but at the same time, uh, the moral issues, moral principles, uh, human rights 
should not be uh, sacrificed for trade or economic interest. I call on the European governments, uh, particularly those countries that experienced Nazi Germany and fascism, to be a vocal uh, or take a position. This is not a difficult position to take. It's not controversial. Um, you know, we've seen it in the history books. We know how this ends when a government pur purposefully, deliberately, systematically attacking religious minority. The international community need to uh, wake up to this brutal uh, regime if never again means anything to them. Thank you so much for joining me today, Nuri. It's been a pleasure talking to you again. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching. If you'd like to know more about what's happening to the Uyghurs, check out the recent episode of the China Unscripted podcast, where we interview Uyghur activist Aslan Hidayat. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.